I decided a good perspective sketch would be this um, kind of lens distorted wide angle photo I took at Diagon Alley in Universal Studios. The basic idea when you're doing any kind of perspective sketch in one point is to set up your horizon line and your center line because that's going to kind of anchor you um, and give you some stuff to work on. I like to start with the major shapes, uh, the big back plane, and then when I get into the detail, I want to start with sort of the most prominent corner. And uh, in this situation, it's this corner on the right because it's kind of it's close, um, it's obvious, and the contour of it's very distinct. Now, I'm gonna, I don't like the sort of wonkiness of this sort of environment, so immediately I'm gonna start making changes and regularizing all of the variations and sort of like leaning towers and everything. Um, I think the aesthetic is a little more mature when you kind of do that instead of this sort of cartoon unbelievable realm and another thing that i'm doing is restricting the field of vision bringing everything closer and as you get into the detail you know you have to figure out how to work with insets and outsets because things are always projecting and going back into space and perspective um, and when you do that, say, on a window, you have to kind of find the, the front part and the back part. And as you work with these um, insets, knowing what's coming forward and what's going back is going to be really important. When you subdivide, you have to subdivide based on what plane you're working in. So when you do the X method to find the center, you have to be very clear whether you're working with the back plane, the front plane, or someplace in between. And when you're insetting and outsetting, if you have vertical and horizontal alignments, you can't. You have to make sure that those alignments are broken up and changed so that they don't look like they're part of the same thing. When you're outsetting, it's sometimes more freeing because you can just sort of build outward from the wall, add, uh, break up contour lines, find some cross contour lines, and uh, add interest. Insetting can be a little bit more mentally taxing because you're having to draw through a wall. So bringing those concepts back into the to the main sketch, you're always thinking about, you know, what hits you in a perspective drawing. Obviously, what's in the center hits you, so that's really important, and that's why, in um, this sort of situation in the architecture that they built, they put this sort of spire at the back. Um, in the photo, you can't even really see the Gringotts Bank area, so I wanted to add that, eliminate the dragon, put a dome on top of there, make it a little more um, classical looking. And I wanted to bring the height down of the building so you kind of see that bank, make the bank a little bit taller and, um, you know, add some details that you can't really see in the reference photo that I'm using. You know, I thought this archway was really boring. So um, I decided to change that significantly. Um, a bunch of like vertical and horizontal lines didn't seem very like magical at the time. It's just very practical to construct. And, you know, all of these structures within the theme park kind of vacillate between the fantastical and like the boringly structural. And I think changing it and making sort of patterns that you wouldn't necessarily use um, in an architectural way is a little more fascinating, a little more interesting. So I kind of like um, went to town on this sort of detail. And I think that's kind of a fun thing you can do when you're sketching is to, you know, not stick to the real world. And, you know, that's the, that's one of the greatest things about, you know, sketching and doing artwork is that you can use the real world as a basis and then change it as you see fit. You know, anytime you can break up a contour, I think it's really critical to, to try and do that. Um, so if you have this sort of like flat, straight corner of a building, if you can break it up and have the contour go around, um, if you can clear up any overlaps and details, essentially in a perspective drawing, you're, you're overlapping and changing size relationships. So 
um, whenever you can do both of that at the same time, you're increasing depth uh, by a huge amount. Um, you know, the other thing too is that I couldn't really quite see everything in the reference. So I had to kind of go with what I know about architecture and buildings and sort of add stuff to it in this sort of exaggerated way um, so that it could kind of help make sense a little. Um, and I realized that I hadn't put a little building on the left side um, and everything else is coming far along. So I had to change that, that a good bit. You know, doing bricks and textures is always kind of risky um, because it can get really time consuming. But um, if you figure out a quick way to, to do the texture, I think it's worth it. Um, you know, one of the last things you want to do is go in um, at the end when you realize your time can, time is running out and like clean up a lot of the contour um, and make sure they get varied and, and changed. Um, you know, if there's any texture that you missed, go back and add that. Um, anytime you have like a perfectly straight vertical or a perfectly straight orthogonal, it's kind of going to not be particularly interesting. You need some of those places so, that, so your eye can take a break, but um, as many of those as you can get in, it's going to add interest to your um, drawing. And you don't want to do like a perfect exact contour. You want to be sure that that contour is broken up and overlapped a little bit so that you're not, again, flattening your image. And then when you're at the end, just find a stopping point. Um, this is usually defined by how much time you have, unfortunately.